Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host Nathan P. Butler, and uh, this is the weekend of Star Wars Celebration. I obviously am not there. Uh, to those of you who are friends of mine who are there at Star Wars Celebration, or perhaps are viewers of mine who are there, um, my thoughts are with you. I hope you have and have had a good time. Um, I, I wish I could be there with you, sort of. Sort of. There's a part of me that wishes I could be there. There's another part, or a couple parts, that uh, I'm kind of glad that I'm not there. The parts that are very glad I'm not there are my feet and my wallet. So, uh, hopefully you're having a good time there at Celebration. And uh, we haven't really heard much in the way of actual home video news coming out of Celebration. We've had some news about different shows on the Disney Plus streaming service. But it seems like in 2022, news about Star Wars physical home media releases is pretty sort of few and far between as are the releases themselves. Um, so this is the third in a series of episodes interrupted by one about a t-shirt here recently, uh, which is going to pick up from episodes 435 and 436 from the Star Wars Home Video Library as we look at some recent releases coming out of other regions that are not available in the United States at all uh, for Star Wars trilogy boxed sets. So to recap, uh, we've been in sort of a drought recently of Star Wars home video releases. Uh, in 2021, the only major release really that we saw of a Star Wars home video item for either a TV series or the films was that the UK finally got to Clone Wars Season 6, The Lost Missions, years after everybody else did. And as far as new film releases on home media, there were none. Right? I even made a joke about it in an episode of the show. Um, so, that being said, it was kind of a big deal when we finally started to see new releases popping up for pre-order and through sort of uh, leaked information that came through, among other places, the digital bits to say, hey, there are going to be trilogy sets coming in 2022. It turned out, though, that it was very unfortunate for those of us in the United States because without importing, there's no way to get our hands on these because these don't exist on the American market. But there are quite a few options available if you are willing to import. Recently, we took a look at sets coming out of the UK, and the most basic of sets coming out of the UK were DVD. This is the prequel trilogy as an example, but again, we saw these back in episode 436 when looking at the stuff from the UK. It was our second episode on this topic, and how it was basically these nice boxed DVD sets, three discs each, just DVD film discs for each film, where they're in these digipack kind of fold-out cardboard packages that go into a slip cover. We saw that they had the prequel trilogy and of course an original trilogy set and a sequel trilogy set. Um, but that was the most basic way to get them coming out of the UK. They are region zero, so theoretically could play outside of the UK, but they are PAL, not NTSC, so usage in the US is limited to those who happen to have players that can handle uh, multi-formats like PAL and NTSC. A uh, C-CAM is usually handled these days through uh, PAL releases in the places it used to do C-CAM. If you even remember what C-CAM is. C-CAM is kind of one of those old terms of art from many years ago that most people are like, what? It was a third option beyond NTSC and PAL, mostly a French thing. In fact, the name is actually from French. Anyway, going far afield, but we're coming back to France in a moment, so I guess it's kind of appropriate. Uh, the next step above those DVD releases out of the UK were Blu-ray releases. Again, the prequel trilogy as an example here. Well, we looked at these back in 436, but these were these really nice, thick, hard slip covers. Again, over a cardboard fold-out format on the inside. And as you'll notice there, for each film, there was two discs. So the DVD sets are three disc. The Blu-ray sets are six disc. The Blu-ray film disc and the Blu-ray bonus features disc. All of these discs just being reissues of the stuff that we got back in 2020, just put in this new packaging that looks really nice on the shelves. We also saw they had an original trilogy set, and we saw they had a sequel trilogy set. What they didn't have was the next logical step upward from Blu-ray. You would think these days it would be DVD if it's going to exist at all, then Blu-ray, pretty much guaranteed, and then a 4K slash Blu-ray set. So a nine disc set, perhaps, if these are six, that simply takes those two Blu-ray discs and packages them with 4K Ultra HD discs. You would think that'd be what we would have gotten. That basically would have been the equivalent of taking the big Skywalker Saga set from the UK, that one right there, and simply splitting it into the three trilogies, whereas this was essentially splitting up that set, and these were simply splitting up that set. Makes perfect sense, and yet it didn't happen. 
the UK didn't get any type of 4K slash Blu-ray release at all, or 4K release at all for that matter, for these trilogy sets. For that, we had to look elsewhere. That was why we started our look at these new releases in the white packaging, these trilogy sets for 2022 in France, because France did get these. They got an equivalent of the DVD sets. They got an equivalent of the Blu-ray sets, but they also got 4K slash Blu-ray sets, which are the 4K film discs, the Blu-ray film disc, the Blu-ray bonus features discs, three for each film, so trilogy sets of nine discs. And again, very nice looking, heavy, no packaging here again, and again, a fold-out digipack to hold all the discs. We looked at these back in episode 435, and we saw that they had that prequel one, an original trilogy one, of course, and a sequel trilogy one. If you're curious about thickness, this was essentially the thickness difference here using the sequel trilogy as an example, using the two from the UK here, the DVD and Blu-ray set, and then the 4K slash Blu-ray set over here from France. Well, the final leg of our journey through these 2022 trilogy sets takes us away from Europe, where you could find some, as I mentioned, in the UK, more, and some identical ones or close to identical ones in places like France, but also in places like Germany and so on. It was not just a French or UK thing. Our last leg of the journey takes us away from Europe and into Australia. And for Australia, we have some kind of interesting, sort of unusual choices made in the development of these sets relative to what we saw in Europe. So we're going to start with DVD. And we're going to find that these are very similar to what we saw out of the UK, except for one major respect, other than just, you know, the rating labels and stuff you would expect to be different between those regions. So in Australia, this is their DVD prequel set. We have the same art that we've seen before. We're not going to really spend a lot of time on the art and whatnot and the labeling because for the most part, that's stuff we've seen in other regions here. Um, so we have the artwork, the titles, DVD in the corner, and the rating label that's required there for Australia, just as you would expect. The back, we have the tagline, the titles, cast crew information, information for the discs themselves, the various icons, including Region 4 PAL. Okay, so this is PAL, but it's Region 4, not Region 0. And I can't check and see if that's just them labeling it 4 or if it really is 4, not 0, and it's not using the same discs because my testing was all done on a region-free DVD player to play these at all. So I can't tell you if it's actually 4 or 0 being labeled as 4 like you sometimes see. Um, you have your legalese down here, UPC, rating information there. The top, again, is just the titles. The bottom is blank. The spine here, though, Lucasfilm, Star Wars, titles with the Roman numerals, starting from the bottom, rating DVD product number, but then notice here, three-disc set. It's almost like they're proclaiming with proudness, this is a three-disc trilogy set, which is kind of cool. I mean, I guess, because that's what it is. That's what it was in the UK, right? It's just the DVD film discs. They didn't do DVD bonus discs recently. It was just DVD film discs, so it makes sense. So we have this. So, so far, similar to the UK, right? And then we reach inside. And it's not a digipack. It's not a cardboard foldout. It's a clear DVD case. Okay? Um, similar style here to the front as on the slip cover, just with no DVD symbol. Similar back. Similar spine. With we open it. There's no insert or anything. It's just the discs for that particular trilogy. We're not going to go in depth with these disc labels because we've seen these labels across the board from many different regions before. It's more just a matter of seeing maybe what's different in how the DVD uh, iconography is arranged as we go from set to set, from region to region. So in this case, we'll use one disc as the example as we go through each of these sets, each of these uh, formats of sets, these sets of sets. Terminology starts to throw me here. So we have the title up there at the top. We have DVD, Lucasfilm, Region 4, PAL, product number, legalese, and some legalese down here that, interestingly enough, actually has the 2022 date on it. It says, uh, no copying subject to applicable law, copyright 2022, and trademark Lucasfilm Limited. Very similar to that of the UK, but a clear case inside, which is a little bit more practical um, and maybe keeps the cost down. I don't know. I'm not sure what the production cost is for those versus something 
more like the foldouts. I would assume the foldouts are more expensive, even though it's paper rather than plastic, specifically because those had to be made specifically for this set, whereas this could be any case, just slip the discs in and sl slip the, uh, the insert in and you're good to go. And in case you're wondering, there's a reason that I did show you that whole comparison earlier. Because it is that regular DVD case inside, it is slightly slimmer than the UK version. And it appears to be just the tiniest bit taller. I think I've got that lined up fairly well, but it's just a tiny bit taller to fit a standard case inside instead of the cardboard packaging. Then we have their version of the original trilogy, exactly as you would expect. Image, titles, rating, DVD. Similar design to the spine with the three disc set there sort of proudly. Similar design here to the back as well. Titles on top, nothing on bottom. I don't feel like I need to constantly show you titles on top, nothing on bottom. It's always going to be the same. But what's inside? Yes, a clear case. So a more functional set in that sense. Less easily damaged. Better protection, presumably, for the discs. But it is just the film discs as one would have expected for the original trilogy. And then finally, again for the first time, but this is the case across the board, a trilogy set for the sequel trilogy. Similar design here with image, titles, rating, DVD. Similar back design, similar spine design, titles, nothing. Okay, so uh, nothing really surprising about this. Put your discs in there. Again, all Region 4 POW. So you could import these into the U.S. if you wanted to have trilogy sets of this design and you like the whole, you know, plastic cases rather than cardboard. Just know that unless you have a player that can handle all region stuff, you're not going to be able to play these in the U.S. But they make for nice additions to the shelves. Then we move to the next step up, beyond DVD, which of course, as you'd expect, is Blu-ray. So we pick up with the prequel trilogy coming out of Australia. Mall, titles, rating, back, similar in design, but of course changing up the information just a little bit to go with these discs coming out of Australia. Okay, titles on top, blank on bottom, spine design, Lucasfilm, Star Wars, titles, rating, Blu-ray, product number, holy Sith! Three discs set? Surely not. Surely it couldn't be. Inside, no cardboard. It's just a standard Blu-ray case again, just like the standard DVD cases there. Um, then you've got your image, your titles, no Blu-ray in the corner, the rating, similar back design, similar spine design, three disc set again. Surely it couldn't be, but it is. It's just the Blu-ray film discs. Let's look at these. Just looking at one as an example again. Similar in setup, though, to the DVD. Title, Blu-ray, Lucasfilm, Region ABC. They are region free, so you could import these if you wanted to play them in the U.S. Product number and a similar design to the legalese that is down there. But yes, the Blu-ray sets being released in Australia, again, proudly proclaiming it, are three-disc sets for Blu-ray also which means that this is essentially a substandard release to many of the ones we saw in 2020 because all you're getting here is the Blu-ray film discs. No Blu-ray bonus features disc whatsoever. And keep in mind, we're talking about Australia, just like with you know most of Europe, the digital copy codes coming with a physical product is really just not a thing in this region either, which means it's not even bonus features that are digital only because there is no digital code. It's just the Blu-ray film discs nothing else. Okay? It is a film only set here on Blu-ray just like it was on DVD. Looks nice on the shelf but boy does that feel lackluster compared to what we saw coming out of the UK and the other regions that have Blu-ray sets like theirs. Same thing for the original trilogy. Similar design with the titles, rating, Blu-ray and so on. Similar back design. There's your spine with three disc set noted again. Interior with the Blu-ray case that is more functional and no Blu-ray symbol and it's just the film Blu-ray discs so, uh, I guess like the good news is that it is the new uh, Blu-ray discs that were authored in 2020 So, you know, you get those nice matching menus and stuff across the board and stuff like that um, It's the Disney Plus cuts 
which means that the colors are better than they were on the 2011 releases that were reissued a while back uh, several times, but it's just the film discs, which is very, very unfortunate in my eyes. Uh, then we have the sequel trilogy here, similar front design, spine design, back design, top design, bottom design, if you want to call blank a design, blue case, similar, all the way around. And this is where the discs really make the most difference, aside from the color thing, because of course we've got the Blu-ray film disc here for Last Jedi, which is the reauthored one, which means it does include uh, the score-only audio track as an option on there. Um, and of course the disc for uh, The Force Awakens does include the J.J. Abrams commentary, so that's nice enough, but again, no bonus features discs whatsoever. A real step down from what we saw in some other regions like the UK, France, etc. So since the Blu-rays coming out of pretty much anywhere uh, at this point are region free, whether it's France, the UK, Australia, and so on, if you're going to import any of these as a collector to be able to have the new trilogy sets from somewhere in your collection, particularly if you're in the US where we got none of them, um, I'm not going to recommend the Australian ones. They are substandard relative to the others because they have no bonus feature discs. Three disc sets, not six disc sets. I would also note, I guess, that these slip covers are just kind of regular slip covers. They're not those nice hard slip covers that you get on ones like out of the UK. Nice, nice, thick, hard covers here. Um, they do take up less space, though. There's Australian here versus UK here. It's a significant difference in physical space um, between the set designs. But then the question is, what happens on the next step up? Is there even a next step up? The UK didn't get one. What about Australia? Yes, Australia did get the next step up from Blu-ray. They do have a release for the 4K versions of the films as trilogy sets, which is nice. But boy, are they lacking compared to if you wanted to import from somewhere like France. And unfortunately, these appear to be the only option that are out there for a 4K related set uh, of these new releases that has English on the cover. Um, if you're someone who is collected from inside the United States, which is, again, the primary audience of this show and the primary uh, focus of my collection, then you're going to have to choose. Basically, you must choose between, unfortunately, what we're going to see here from Australia. It's not all that great, but interesting, though. Definitely interesting, if not great. Um, and something like ordering from France, uh, which is easy enough. Amazon France did a great job getting them here, but it will be French language on your packaging. So which matters most? What's in it or the language on the packaging? Are you using it to watch? You know, you probably got a ton of different ways to watch it. Or are you putting it on the shelf to look cool or to be part of your collection? Uh, your mileage will certainly vary. So what we see coming out of Australia is something we have not seen for a Star Wars release before, to my knowledge, certainly not of anything I have in my collection. This may be the first time we're seeing this happen at all. It certainly is the first time I've run across it. Here is the prequel trilogy set. Okay. Same image, okay. same titles, rating. Down in the corner, it does denote the fact that this is Ultra HD Blu-ray. Interestingly, there is no like J-card or anything to go with these. And yet, there is no area up here that's printed on here, like say in France, that says the whole 4K Ultra HD thing up at the top. It's clean looking. It's basically, with the exception of the fact that you can check out the logo down here in the corner, it's essentially indistinguishable from the Blu-ray packaging here. Um, usually there's that giant area up here all about 4K, or there's a J card that folds over that says 4K. But not this time, it's just this little subtle thing down here in the corner. Be careful, I guess, if you're in Australia looking for these because that's the big distinguishing feature. We turn it over to the back. Similar design, but now, of course, it has to have that 4K information here, but otherwise, similar stuff. Uh, it's all, you know, region-free stuff, so you can play it wherever. We look at the top. We look at the bottom. We look at the side. They're so proud of it. Three-disc set. Are you shitting me? Was my initial reaction to this. Um, it's actually what prompted me to buy any from Australia at all because this is so weird for us to see this for a Star Wars release. Three disc set. Yes. Ponder what that means. I'm sure it's obvious. We're about to see. Inside the packaging, 
that's where we get another standard case. In this case, though, it's a standard case for 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray discs. So it is the black case, and it does have the 4K Ultra HD thing up at the top because that's built into the case design. Similar front, back, and side. What must this be? Well, if it's only three discs, all it can be, if it's a 4K set, is the 4K film discs for each film in the trilogy. No Blu-rays at all. All, or at least no standard Blu-rays at all. Technically, Ultra HD Blu-ray is a Blu-ray format. It's a type of Blu-ray, just like Blu-ray 3D is. No standard, regular HD Blu-ray film discs or bonus discs. It is just the 4K film discs. Which does make this, you know, somewhat cheaper to actually purchase than if you were trying to get one of the sets that includes Blu-ray. So if you're someone who only wants the 4K discs, doesn't care about the Blu-rays, or maybe has the Blu-rays elsewhere, this actually is a nice bargain way to get them, especially given the fact that they'll play in any region. But it is a huge step down from what we would have expected. Instead of a nine disc set, it's a three disc set from each of these trilogies so that all we get is the 4K disc with really bonus features completely absent. Um, just, I was not expecting this. I guess I should have. If physical media is shrinking as a market, I should have expected that eventually we would see 4K discs packaged by themselves as we move into that era. Just like for a while there, Every Blu-ray you could see in the U.S. tended to seem like it was coming with DVD copies, and then slowly but surely it was Blu-ray with no DVD copy with it, but still usually a digital code as well. Again, these, this market, no digital codes, no bonus features whatsoever, even digitally. So there we have the discs. Again, a very similar design to Elsewhere in the World. Title, Legalese, with that updated Legalese down here that says 2022. Uh, Lucasfilm over here, 4K Ultra HD, Ultra HD Blu-ray, and product number underneath there. But yes, a 4K only set coming out of Australia. And of course that continues. A 4K only set for the original trilogy. Similar design to Blu-ray except for the Ultra HD Blu-ray thing here. Same kind of deal on the back and spine. Again, three disc set and top and bottom, though I don't really need to show you every time, I guess. Similar design with no symbol down here. And then, yeah, just the 4K discs here for the original trilogy films. And finally, a 4K only set for the sequel trilogy. Same design you would expect. Again, again, I should note, I guess, that on the spine, yeah, where it says the three, it does have the Ultra HD Blu-ray symbol there, as opposed to Blu-ray. That is one thing that's interesting, is that a lot of times in other regions, um, when it's an Ultra HD Blu-ray and Blu-ray package, in fact, in some regions where it's that plus um, Blu-ray 3D, a lot of times the only symbol that'll be on there is Blu-ray. In this case, there are no regular Blu-rays, so the symbol that's on there is Ultra HD only there. Just depends on your region that you're looking at, though, um, how they denote that on the spine, if at all. So, not a huge thing, just, you know, interesting. And, of course, these are the reauthored discs, so in the case of Force Awakens, it's the only one. Rise of Skywalker, it's the only one, but... For Last Jedi, that does mean this is the remastered version, so no Dolby Vision anymore on that one. And it was before that, you know, you'd be like, oh man, I don't have the Dolby Vision, I got a substandard disc, but at least now I've got the Blu-ray that has the uh, score-only audio track, and I've got the bonus feature disc Blu-ray that now has Meet the Porgs on it to go with my downgraded 4K disc for Last Jedi, so at least it kind of balances out. Well, not anymore. Not here. There is nothing to balance that out. It's just a lower version, so to speak, of the Last Jedi 4K disc than what was released in 2018. As you can imagine, though, having only three discs does make these significantly smaller than their counterparts that have the Blu-ray disc in them as well. Australia over here, France over here. Yeah, they take up way less space. They take up about the same amount of space as any of, like, the trilogy Blu-ray sets that we saw in, say, 2011, uh, you know, 2017 with Forces of Destiny with it, 2013 as the combo packs and all. So, nice and compact ones here, but you are essentially paying, so to speak, less to get less with less space. Um, so, definitely the fact that these are cheaper to get from Australia, even before you talk about exchange rates, does or should give us an indicator that the content is going to be less than what we would see elsewhere. 
Uh, I think it's kind of interesting here. The reason why I picked this up was not because I wanted to have substandard copies in my collection or anything like that. I usually, if it was the same as in other regions, wouldn't have picked these up from Australia. But the fact that across the board for DVD, for Blu-ray, and for Ultra HD Blu-ray, every single set was one disc per film, just the film disc of that format, which meant that the Blu-ray set and the 4K set were significantly different than what we would see in most regions or expect to see, say, in the U.S. or even in most other regions. Um, I thought that was worth taking a look at and worth picking up for my collection. And thankfully, because they were cheaper, because of less discs, that made it much more easy for me to actually pick up all nine of these to show you here on the show. Um, so yeah, I think this is the end of me picking up stuff from these product lines, from this new 2022 product line. I don't expect it to be released in the U.S. even later this year, but I'm kind of crossing my fingers hoping that eventually does happen. I don't think I'm going to pick up any of the other ones from France at this point. I might, but I doubt it, just to have the matching set uh, with the other six of them. It's what's holding me back. It is six of them, and the euro usually is stronger than the dollar right now, so we're talking about some pretty high prices to do that. So I think I'm good. I've got the six releases out of the UK. I've got three releases out of France to at least show what was missing from the UK and what could have been, so to speak. And I've got the nine from Australia. I think I'm in pretty good shape with showing these. Uh, and I wanted to share all of them with you here on the show as soon as it was possible. It took a while for these to arrive. Coming from Australia usually takes a bit longer uh, for me than coming from the UK or Japan or somewhere like that, even longer than it took from France. And they were kind of spread out. It was like, here's a set of three in one package. Here's a set of three in another package, but those other three, we're going to send them to you one at a time, thankfully, which arrived within a couple days of each other. So now that they're in my hands, I'm going to share that just to help you get a sense of what's out there and maybe give you a sense of your options if you're looking for these. Personally, if English language on the packaging is not an issue, I would definitely pick up the higher end sets from France. They are beautiful looking. All the discs will work if you're in the U.S., um, they just have French language on them. If you're looking for Blu-ray or DVD, go for the UK, because otherwise, by going to Australia, you are missing out on some discs. If space is at a premium and you just want something that looks like these in your collection, then I would turn to Australia. If you're in Australia, you might even forego your own and import from somewhere else, because, yeah, yeah, you guys just got the short end of the stick when it came to the Blu-ray and Ultra HD releases here. They're interesting. They're a nice like marker point in Star Wars Home Video in that it's really the first time we've seen them take an approach like this for those Ultra HD discs, for instance, but still kind of sucks to be a consumer trying to pick these up in Australia. Uh, with that, though, we will wrap up this episode. Thank you for watching. May the Force be with the Home Video viewers, wherever you are in the world. And I guess with this stuff, not here, because the Force wasn't with us with these. Hey, Australia, at least you got something.